Hi, welcome back. In this week's chapter assignment, we're going to continue learning how to improve a paragraph. In particular, we're going to talk about some techniques for making your paragraph more clear, more concise, and in general, just easier for your readers to understand what you're saying. One way to make your paragraph more concise is to simply delete, or as I like to say, weed out, any details that are not directly related to the topic sentence of your paragraph. As you start doing more writing, you'll discover that in the early stages of composition, it's easy to drift from your main topic. This is not really a problem in the beginning stages of your first draft, because it's always good to get a lot of ideas down on paper as quickly as you can. Just keep in mind that later on, you'll probably want to weed out some of these ideas to make your paragraph more concise. Another way to improve your paragraph is to arrange your supporting details in a logical order. This will make your writing much easier for a reader to comprehend and follow along. First, let's take a look at how to delete unrelated details in a paragraph. Here's an example of a first draft that I wrote for this week's writing assignment. This is called a process paragraph where I explain to a reader how to research bicycles before making a purchase. My main point or topic sentence is, shopping for a new bicycle starts at home. From here I go right into the body sentences of the paragraph. Before you visit your local bike shop, think about which road service on which you'll spend most of your time riding. Does this sound like it's directly related to the topic sentence? I think it does. How about the next sentence? Some bike shops provide free tune-ups for new customers. Now, this sentence is certainly related to bicycles, but it really doesn't have anything to do with my topic sentence, which is all about shopping for a bike so I'm going to highlight this as a possible deletion. How about the next sentence? Will you be riding on city streets, paved bike paths, or off-road trails? Since this is a question that people should ask themselves before buying a bike, I'm going to say that yes, this supporting detail is very much related to the topic sentence. How about the next sentence? Then research how bikes are designed for specific road surfaces. Again, this sentence is very much related to the topic sentence, so it also stays. How about, most cities have detailed maps of bike paths in your area. Now this sentence is about biking, but it's not directly related to my topic sentence, so I'll highlight this as a possible deletion. How about this sentence? You will discover that manufacturers offer a variety of bicycle styles. The sentence is talking about bicycle manufacturers, so it's definitely related to my topic sentence about shopping for bikes, so it stays. Now let's go ahead and delete the questionable sentences and see how the paragraph looks. Shopping for a new bicycle starts at home. Before you visit your local bike shop, think about which road surface on which you'll spend most of your time riding. Will you be riding on city streets, paved bike paths, or off-road trails. Then research how bikes are designed for specific road surfaces. You will discover that manufacturers offer a variety of bicycle styles. That sounds much better. Now let's take a look at how organization can help make your paragraph more clear and concise. Now keep in mind that a paragraph can be organized in three different ways. You can organize a paragraph by time, you can organize a paragraph by space, and you can organize a paragraph by importance. Let's take a closer look at each of these. When we organize by time, we're talking about a paragraph that explains a sequence of events, or in other words, a paragraph that tells a story. This should sound familiar to you since this is exactly what you did when you wrote your narration paragraph earlier in this course. And if you recall, the assignment asked you to use certain transition words in sentences like after, before, during, finally. Organizing your paragraph by time is the perfect choice when writing about anything that includes a sequence of events. When we organize by space, we're talking about a paragraph that describes a place, a person, or a thing. 
The paragraph often refers to the senses in its supporting details, like how something looks, sounds, or smells. When we organize by importance, we're talking about a paragraph that makes its point gradually by starting with the smaller details first and then building up to the most important detail at the end. Organizing your paragraph by importance is the perfect choice when writing to persuade or convince a reader to see your point of view. In writing and composition terms, this is called an argument. This type of paragraph also uses specific transition words to help the reader understand what the author is talking about, like above all, more important, one reason, and especially. In your textbook, you'll find some great examples for improving your paragraph using the techniques I've just mentioned. In this week's writing workshop, I'm going to have you write what's called a process analysis. Now, don't worry, this term sounds more complicated than it really is. As you'll soon find out, a process analysis is simply a paragraph that explains a sequence of events. In one type of process analysis, you might explain to a reader how to do something. For example, this car tire changing guide could be called a process analysis because it explains a procedure or a sequence of events that your reader will follow. In another type of process analysis, you might explain to a reader how something works which is a little different from how to do something because you're not giving instructions to your reader, you're simply explaining what happens during a process. For example, this chart that explains how water evaporates and is then converted back into rain could certainly be called a process analysis. For this assignment, I want you to write a paragraph for each type of process analysis I just mentioned. Let's call the How to Do Something paragraph Part 1 and the How Something Works paragraph Part 2. In Part 1, you'll be explaining a procedure for your readers to follow. It should be a sequence of events that takes them from a starting point to a completion point. Your How to Do Something paragraph should be written in what's called the second person voice, which I'll explain in more detail in this week's grammar workshop. In part two, you'll be explaining a process for your readers to better understand. It should also explain a sequence of events from beginning to end. Your How Something Works paragraph should be written in what's called the third person voice which I'll also explain in this week's grammar workshop. Be sure to take a look at the samples I've provided here for both a How to Do Something paragraph and a How Something Works paragraph. The first step in writing your process paragraph is to decide on a topic and then write a topic sentence. Here are a few tips to help you get started. First, choose a topic that you are familiar with. Obviously, this will make the assignment easier to complete. Be sure to choose a topic that includes a sequence. If your topic doesn't show your reader how to do something or how something works, then it's not really a process analysis. Finally, avoid topics that are too large to cover in one paragraph. It's important that you choose something that can be explained in 8 to 10 sentences. Let's take a closer look at what I mean by choosing a topic that includes a sequence. In my sample paragraph for How to Do Something, I explain to readers the steps they should take when shopping for a new bicycle. The first topic sentence I wrote for my paragraph sounded like this. The best places to shop for a new bicycle. Now, this sentence is certainly related to the topic of shopping for bicycles, but it implies that my paragraph is mostly about reviewing local bike shops. That's not really the purpose of my paragraph, so I'm going to rewrite this topic sentence to show readers that I'll be explaining step by step how to do something. Shopping for a new bicycle begins at home. The important difference here is the word begins which is just enough to let the reader know that I'm talking about a process or a sequence of events. 
Here's another example where a student wants to write about improving your baseball game. There's nothing wrong with this sentence in general, but it doesn't really indicate that the paragraph will explain a process or sequence of events. A better topic sentence might be, three steps to a better swing. Notice that adding the words three steps immediately lets the reader know that this paragraph explains how to do something in a step-by-step -step process. In this example, the student wants to show readers how to use positive thinking to improve their lives. Again, the problem with this topic sentence is that it doesn't really indicate that the reader will learn some practical steps for using positive thinking. A better topic sentence might be, start your day with positive thinking. Notice how the words start your day immediately show the reader that your paragraph is about a process or a sequence of events. Another important consideration when writing your topic sentence is to make sure your topic is small enough to write about in one paragraph. For example, this topic sentence, the five stages of building a house, might be fine for a full-length article or even a book, but the topic is much too large for a single paragraph. A better topic sentence for this assignment might be, the safe way to measure, mark, and cut a board. Or how about this topic sentence, the road to financial independence. Do you think it's possible to cover this topic adequately in one paragraph? Probably not. A better choice might be how to save $30 in three days. Once you've decided on a good topic sentence, the next step is to make a numbered list of each step in your process. The worksheet I've provided here can help you do that. In my sample paragraph, you'll see that my topic sentence is shopping for a new bicycle starts at home. And I made that sentence the first sentence in my paragraph. From here, I listed each step that readers should follow in researching and shopping for a bike, and I used transition words in my sentences to remind readers that I'm explaining a process. Before you visit your local bike shop, think about which road surface on which you'll spend most of your time riding. Notice the transition word before, which does a nice job of letting the reader know that I'm talking about a sequence of events. Will you be riding on city streets, paved bike paths, or off-road trails? Then research how bikes are designed for specific road surfaces. Notice the transition word, then. You will discover that manufacturers offer a variety of bicycle styles. After you have a better understanding of the basic styles available, decide which type most closely matches your kind of riding. Notice the transition word after. Next, decide how much money you can spend. Again, notice the transition word next. Then go online and read reviews of the type of bike you are interested in buying, paying attention to the brands and models mentioned in the reviews. So that's the basic structure of a process analysis, and in particular, the type of process that explains to a reader how to do something. In the second part of this assignment, I want you to write a process paragraph that explains to a reader how something works. As I mentioned earlier, this is a little different from how to do something because you're not giving instructions to your reader, you're simply explaining what happens as something goes through a process. For example, you might explain to your reader what happens during the metamorphosis of a butterfly. Notice how the words life cycle reveal that the paragraph is likely going to explain a sequence of events. You might also use this type of process analysis to explain how our bodies convert food into energy. Notice how the words convert and into imply that the paragraph is likely going to explain a sequence of events. In my sample paragraph, I used a process analysis to explain what happens in our brains while we sleep. Notice how the words five stages certainly indicate that my paragraph will explain a certain sequence of events. 
Now, when choosing a topic for your How It Works paragraph, I want you to follow the same guidelines I talked about earlier for the How to Do Something paragraph. And that is, choose a topic you are familiar with, choose a topic that includes a sequence, and avoid topics that are too large to cover in one paragraph. Let's take a closer look at choosing topics that include a sequence. In the first draft of my human sleep paragraph, I had the following topic sentence. Human sleep repairs and regenerates tissues, builds bone and muscle, and strengthens the immune system. Now this might be a perfectly fine topic sentence for any other type of paragraph, perhaps a description paragraph or an illustration paragraph. But because I'm writing a process analysis, I need to add something here to indicate that I'll be talking about a sequence of events. How about human sleep produces five stages of brainwave activity? Notice how the words five stages immediately lets a reader know that I'm talking about a process. Or how about friendships found in college often last a lifetime? Again, this is a perfectly fine topic sentence for some other type of paragraph, but because in this paragraph I want to explain how something works, I need to add something to indicate a process or sequence of events. Friendships that start in college go through many stages during a lifetime. That's better. Notice how the words start go through, and stages definitely let a reader know that this paragraph will be explaining a process. Another important thing to consider when writing your How Something Works paragraph is to avoid choosing a topic that is too large to adequately explain in one paragraph. You have only 8 to 10 sentences to work with here, so be careful to choose a topic with a reasonably narrow focus. For example, in this topic sentence, the three ages of dinosaurs include the Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous periods. This subject is far too large to explain adequately in just one paragraph. A better, more narrow sentence might be, dinosaur eggs follow an incubation period similar to modern-day birds. Do you see the difference here? How about how laws are made through the legislative process. Again, this is far too large of a subject to cover in just one paragraph. A better choice might be, what happens when the president vetoes a bill? Be sure to take a look at both the sample paragraphs I've provided you in this module. These are both good examples of the type of writing I'm looking for in this assignment. The grammar workshop for this week is all about writing in a particular point of view or voice. Point of view is the way in which an author speaks to a reader, and there are three basic types of point of view that an author might use. First person, second person, and third person. In first person writing, an author speaks as if he or she is having a face-to-face conversation with a reader. This type of writing includes words like I and we, often placed at the beginning of a sentence. In second-person writing, an author also speaks directly to a reader, but without referring to himself or herself in the conversation. This type of writing includes words like you and your, again, often placed at the beginning of a sentence. In third-person writing, an author speaks to no one directly, but refers to people, places, and things with words like he or she or it. So why is this important, and what does all this have to do with this week's module? Well, different kinds of writing call for different points of view. For example, authors who write memoirs about their lives are likely to have a book that includes a lot of the words I and me. That's first-person voice, and it makes good sense to use this point of view when writing about yourself. Authors who write instructions for readers to follow are likely to use the words you and your in many of the sentences. That's second-person voice, and it makes good sense to use this point of view when telling a reader how to do something. 
On the other hand, authors who write primarily to share information usually don't refer to themselves or the reader. Instead, these authors focus primarily on the subject, using words like he, she, it, or simply the name of the person, place, or thing that they are writing about. That's third-person voice, and it makes good sense to use this point of view when explaining how something works. Now, a common mistake that beginning writers often make is to combine the different voices in one paragraph. This can result in a very confusing and awkward-sounding paragraph. For example, see if you can spot the inconsistencies in point of view as I read through this paragraph. I like to travel, but I often have trouble at airports. You never know if your departure might be delayed, which can make you late for a connecting flight. Airlines often delay or cancel flights due to poor weather conditions. Sometimes I think flight delays have nothing to do with the weather. Did you notice that some sentences begin with the word I, while others begin with the word you? And other sentences simply begin with the subject the author is talking about. This is a good example of a paragraph that contains three different points of view. The author starts the paragraph in first-person voice, using the word I, then switches to second-person voice, using the words you and your. The next sentence is in third-person voice because it refers to the subject of the paragraph only. This is followed by another sentence in first person, using the word I. The mixed voice here can be easily corrected by simply choosing one point of view to use throughout the entire paragraph. For example, using first person voice, the paragraph might read like this. I like to travel, but I often have trouble at airports. I never know if my departure might be delayed, which can make me late for a connecting flight. I often see airlines delay or cancel flights due to poor weather conditions, but I wonder if some flight delays have nothing to do with weather. Or using second-person voice, the paragraph might read like this. If you like to travel, you know that trouble can sometimes be waiting for you at the airport. It's hard to know if your departure might be delayed, which can make you late for a connecting flight. You'll often see airlines delay or cancel flights due to poor weather conditions, but you might wonder if some flight delays have anything to do with weather. Or how about third-person voice? In this case, the paragraph might read like this. Trouble can often be waiting for travelers at the airport. Departure flights can unexpectedly be delayed, causing passengers to be late for connecting flights. Although airlines might blame the weather for delayed or canceled flights, travelers often question if some flight delays really have anything to do with the weather. Do you see the differences here in these three examples? Hopefully you've noticed that second-person and third-person voice are exactly the types of writing that I want you to use in the assignments for this week. The How to Do Something paragraph and the How Something Works paragraph. And to help you get some practice in identifying the different points of view, I have a worksheet I'd like you to complete. Well, that's it for this week. If you have any questions about the assignments, please be sure to contact me through the Angel Course mail page. Have a good week, and I'll see you again in the next module.